here. Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. Um, brothers and sisters, again, I told you we were going to have a fantastic lecture today uh, coming from uh, California, Compton, uh, our brother Legrand Clay. Uh, Legrand has written, I think, how many books have you written, LeGrand? Well, it's just, I, I produced tapes and okay. with Black Men Ru Rule the World and um, The Daughters of Isis. And I had uh, booklets that accompanied them. Okay, very good. And you were also the attorney for uh, Compton. Uh, you're an attorney. Yes. Uh, and you work out of Compton, California. California, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I was, uh, my family's from Arkansas, and uh, my brothers and sisters and I were born here in uh, Los Angeles, uh, in California in general. Uh, I grew up in Compton, California, and um, attended, uh, uh, I graduated from UCLA's undergrad. I went to Howard University's law school, and um, when I was uh, let's see, a sophomore, I learned, well, no, I think I was, it was, yes, the first, the beginning of my sophomore year, I was sitting in a philosophy class and one of the, one of my fellow students handed me J.A. Rogers' book, um, Sex and Race, about the, uh, inner, inner, the uh, mixing of blacks and whites over the, over the centuries, uh, volume three. And it was a life changer. It, it, it completely revolutionized my thinking with respect to the accomplishment of black people. And from then until now, and that's 58 years, I have pursued uh, black history and culture. Uh, being an attorney was my job, but black history, history and culture uh, was my, in, as, a, as a whole, was my work. Mm -hmm. And um, so today, uh, you know, I still engage in it. Uh, many of you are aware that Renoko Rashidi just passed away. He was one of our very prominent uh, black scholars. He and I, we, we were responsible for his moving into uh, his research and everything because he, he, had ten, he was on our staff at Compton Community College when I was on the board there. So my, in terms of black history and culture though, my emphasis have been one, Egypt 18th dynasty, and number two, the black presence in America before Columbus. I've done other work, you know, the, the uh, black royalty in Hawaii and a few other things, but those two have been my focus uh, because I really, really think it's important for our people to know how great black people have been. And so that is why I pursued that over the years, even though I'm an attorney by profession. Thank you very much. Let me, uh, let me ask you your book, <clears throat> When Black Men Ruled the World, uh, fantastic. But I'd like for you to, to tell me a little about the time when black men ruled the world. Uh, the question I'm gonna ask you is, um, where were, where, where were, or maybe we should say, because they still are, the oldest um, uh, centers of civilization uh, on the earth located? Where were they located? Uh, the oldest civilized, civilized uh, countries and civilizations uh, on planet earth in ancient times. Okay. You know, I would like to recommend for your listeners and viewers, uh, I used to um, uh, read Atlantis Rising, which, is a, uh, which was a bi-monthly magazine. And they explored the antiquity of civilization and people on Earth. And they revealed a lot of things that are not traditional. You know, in other words, uh, uh, for example, there's a book called, I think it's called Forbidden Archaeology, Forbidden Archaeology. And they speak of uh, evidence of civilization going back 
several million years. Uh, and then in, in, um, in uh, Atlantis Rising, as well as Nexus Magazine, which is now still available, Atlantis Rising stopped publishing, I think, in, in 2019. But they uh, speak of civilization having been much older than we view it today. Now, there's also a book uh, that I recent, well, it's about 10 years old now, called Temples of the African Gods. Temples of the African Gods. And it really, um, it's written by, uh, it's co-authored by uh, Tellinger and Heine. And they're two white South Africans, very interesting. And what they've done is they have literally taken every inch of Southern Africa and uh, excavated artifacts and so forth and so on throughout. And they've gone into the caves down there and all that. And their position is that they have found, quote, billions of artifacts, not millions, but billions of artifacts in Southern Africa. And they say that they have uncovered cities as large as Los Angeles and Johannesburg dating back a hundred thousand years. Now I say that because I, you know, we, we just each year and there, there's an ongoing effort to excavate more and more evidence of ancient civilizations. And remember African people, black people were the original people on the planet and no matter how far you go back you go, it's going to be black wherever it is, whether it's in China or India or Mexico or Africa, it will be black at a certain point because at a certain point, the only people on earth were Africans. Now, having said that, traditional the traditional view is that civilization began along the Nile Valley, first with the Kushites, uh, also called Nubia, and Ethiopia later, and that was the mother culture of Kemet, Egypt. And it was from the Nile Valley that human beings spread out all around the world. And uh, wherever you see civilization, it, its roots were in Africa along the Nile Valley. So that is why there's so much attention drawn to Kemet, you know, among our scholars, and among scholars in general, for example, there are magazines on Kemet and so forth and so on. There are any, there's no, there are no magazines, there are very, very few, not worth mentioning, on Greece or on Rome or on even the Indus Valley or, or uh, the uh, or Mesopotamia. Civilization started in Africa. And people, the Western, uh, one, one thing I, I loved about Renoko Rashidi, he took this to heart and traveled all around the world. And he did not care what Western science, white people thought about it because he knew, and we all know that they're just like Donald Trump, they're in the business of lying, cheating and suppressing. They have a real problem with black people as we all know. And uh, it, it, uh, we see it in the manifestation of police killings and the effort to suppress vote and to prevent, prevent us from moving to certain neighborhoods but also in academia. It's just one lie after another when it comes to history and the contributions of black people. They, they know how great we have been, clearly, and there is this, 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 um, uh, com this widespread uh, fear about what we, could, what we could ultimately be again. Now, having mentioned how ancient civilization could be. I also believe, I'm hoping that my comments now will trigger an interest on the part of young black people. See, let me just say this before I say what I'm about to say. I do not allow Western science or even our scholars to limit the range of my thinking and vision. And I believe that the world is, that the universe is much more complex than we are taught. And I, I am very um, uh, cognizant of the fact that Africans are always, 
there, our tradition is always looking toward the sky and questioning and, and, and looking there as if that is our origin. And so uh, I'm very interested in the fact that um, the Russians have found uh, obelisks on the moon. This brilliant, brilliant scientist, uh, Richard Hoagland, has found pyramids on Mars. And our people speak of having come from the star Sirius and all of that. So I'm saying we don't know how ancient civilization is. And let me say this too. There's a book called, and I have it here because I, I, I was thinking about that in terms of, uh, of uh, antiquity. It's called Ancient High Tech by Frank Joseph. And he talks about finding, um, uh, let's see, art, uh, let's see, robotics and other forms of artificial intelligence, man flight, such as hot air balloons and gliders, military science, including flamethrowers, biological warfare, po poison gas, solar-powered cannons, and um, other things. There's evidence of civilization having been more advanced than Western science will admit, because, you know, we have to realize that I do not hate white people at all, but I don't like the way their scientists are untruthful with respect to the, the uh, contributions of black people. What they have tried to do, as Asa, Dr. Asa Hillary had said, if not Greece, then Sumer as the origin of civilization, when, when it was, even if it started in Sumer, that was black, we'll probably get to that too. But they try to limit the achievements of human beings at, at, uh, to the time that they've been here. And, you know, there's a, a, a geneticist, I don't, can't think of his name, but my good friend David M. Hotep, who wrote the book, The First Americans Were Africans, he talks about it. He says that white people have not been on this planet more than six or 7,000 years. Well, if indeed civilization possibly goes back much beyond that, which it, which it obviously does, they aren't going to acknowledge that because they weren't here. And so uh, I'm hoping that some enterprising young black people will look at, will, will look at the fact that the Soviets feel that they found obelisks on the moon, and that Richard Hoagland says they found pyramids on Mars. I'm only saying that because what if indeed Afri uh, black people came from some other uh, planetary system and, and populated the earth. I don't know that to be true, but I do know that we should not shortcut or, or limit our perception as to how civilization started and how old it is. Now, having said all of that, civilization is believed to extend about back to about five or 6,000 years ago, first in Kush and then in Egypt. And it spread all around the world from there. And when I mean civilization, I mean cities, art, religion, architecture, science, law, and, all, and, and more. For example, I'm an attorney. The, the, uh, the ancient Egyptians had a very advanced legal system, including juries and filing wills and, and uh, treaties, all of that long before Greece was born. And see, we have to open up our concepts and um, uh, what we accept as reality and engage in this kind of research. And as I said, I hope that what I'm saying today will attract some young people. I might be wrong, but I have the right to inquire. And what I'm saying is do not limit, we should not limit ourselves to what white people say is the extent of history and how old history is. You know, I don't accept that. Now, most recently, there have been um, some findings in Napta Playa. I think, let's see. Uh, let's see, two places. That's one, and then another. Ah, I can't think of the other one, but it's in Turkey. They found um, a civilization there that appears to extend back 12, 14,000 years. And also, Dr. Robert Schott has antedated the Sphinx to at least nine or 10,000 years ago. And um, what I'm saying is there's evidence that civilization is much older. And in that same vein, um, 
we all know the about Noah's flood story, where there are 500 flood stories around the world, 500. And there's a book, uh, I think it's called Cataclysm 9500, which proves that there was a great flood. We, we know it through Christianity as Noah's flood. The point I want to make with regard to that is this, that when you study the flood and, and, and talk about evidence and, and what the legends were about civilization before the flood, they speak of civilization as being very, very advanced, even having flying machines in India called Vimana. There's a whole book on them, Vimana. So anyway, I don't want to get too much off track, but when you ask me how old is civilization, I can present you, I have presented to you, the standard perspective, which is ancient Kush, ancient Nubia, ancient Kemet, or I can say, look, we can look beyond that, and there are hints, hints, H-I-N-T-S, of civilization not only elsewhere, but in other parts of the universe. And we need to look, we can, if people, oh, you're, you're mad, you're crazy. No, no, I'm not. We have a right to inquire. And so I'm saying that, again, that we need to look beyond the narrow confines of what Western science has told us is the origin and, and, and antiquity of civilization. Now, <clears throat> when we speak of uh, areas uh, like Babylon and Elam and Summer and all those ancient civilizations were they African people? What what was the boundaries of of uh, Nile Valley civilization, uh, where African people were? What would be the boundaries in ancient times, all the way up until the Suez Canal? Okay, um, in antiquity, you know, it varied. Uh, initially, you know, there's a brother named. Susan, Su, Sujan Das, Supreme Understanding, and he's written a book called, um, he's written 20 books, he's only 41, he's written 20 books, and one of them is, in, or, or I think it's two or three volumes entitled When the World Was Black, and he talks about the founding of Kemet, Egypt, and it, it appears uh, that initially it was from you know, the mountains, the moon, all the way up to the Mediterranean. And over time, Kemet expanded. For example, um, uh, my favorite dynasty during the 18th dynasty, uh, you had prior to the 18th dynasty from the 13th to the 17th or 16th, you had these people called Hyksos, Asians, uh, people, from, uh, people from Western Asia who came into the Nile Valley and conquered it. And this was the, the first time that Kemet had been conquered and it was considered the great humiliation. Well, um, uh, when the king was the, the, the upper, the um, uh, lower Egyptian pharaohs were pushed to the south by the conquering Asians. And they mobilized themselves and began a war of liberation. And it began with uh, Sikhanen Ray and uh, his brother Sikhanen uh, Sik Ray and another Sikhanen Ray. And, and when Sikhanen Ray was killed, his wife Ahatep took over the army and she uh, 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 fought the Hyksos northward until her son Kamos was old enough to fight. And he took over the army after that. And when he was killed in battle, his, his younger brother, Amose, took over and uh, they, re, they reconquered Kemet. But they didn't stop there. And it appears that this was the first time that they expanded their ba boundaries uh, for, uh, with a permanent empire. They moved into Western Asia where these Asians had come from and completely took over much of Western Asia to keep them, to, look, to say, look, you will not ever come into the black land again and take over. So we're holding you in check. Now, at that point, the empire extended, it ultimately extended, I would say, across the Mediterranean into Greece. And it certainly 
extended um, eastward into much of uh, Western Asia. Now, what's interesting is that prior to that, uh, during the Middle Kingdom, you know, the 11th and 12th dynasties, during the Mentohotep's period at Sesostris, those pharaohs were some extraordinary, I mean, they were some brothers who took no prisoners. They, um, during the 11th and 12th dynasties, went into Europe and wreaked havoc. As a matter of fact, you know, they try to say, you know, Western scientists, they're always trying to confine what black people have done. And so they said, well, you know, they didn't go into Europe. Well, they did go into Europe. And there are two, uh, uh, Martin Bernal uh, devotes part of that in his, in his, to, to that in his book, Black Athena. And he speaks of uh, uh, their having conquered uh, much of, of, of Eastern Europe into, I don't know how far west they went, but they went somewhat far west, okay? And what they did was um, they would find white settlements because, you know, whites didn't live in cities. They lived in caves and settlements. And they were so sesostrous in particular. There were three of them. And they're not sure which one it was, but one of them was so uh, such a pioneer and explorer and um, conqueror that he would take over various cities, of, or I call them cities, the settlements of whites. And he would he would uh, once they conquered them, if they fought, if they didn't fight with valor, he would draw the vagina on the city gate and which meant they fought like women, you know, and they were cowards. In one instance, he conquered this settlement of white people. And um, he, what he did was apparently he had chariot, they had chariots then because this is what he did. He, you know how chariots, you have horses and all that. When he conquered them, he found out who the, rulers were and he removed his chariots his, his his horses and replaced the horses with the royal family and the you know the soldiers and the pharaoh remained there for i don't know how long maybe six months or whatever and during that time whenever they had whenever they would mount the chariot the royal family would pull them around that's just how powerful these pharaohs were now they were the first empire builders they didn't they didn't maintain a solid empire in Kemet like the 18th dynasty did, but they did conquer a lot of territory in Europe and in Asia. Do not expect white scholars to admit that. That is why we have to carve out our own reality and tell the truth about it based on evidence. Okay. Now, when Herodotus, uh, I'm trying to remember what he he talked about the having um, found. Uh, black people in uh, well, I can't think of the uh, mm, I can't think of the country now, but it was in Eastern Europe, and he said that he had heard that the Pharaoh Sesostris had been there, and it appears as if he left some of his uh, soldiers there, and that was evidence of his having been there. But these pharaohs were mighty, and even to Harka, to they have found evidence of Taharka, and Van Sertima mentioned this in one of the journals, in Spain. Evidence of his having been to, in Spain. So when you ask me what are the boundaries, initially it was the Nile Valley, including Cush uh, um, and perhaps uh, um, oh boy, what is the name of that country? Uh, uh, Punt on the Horn of Africa, where Somalia is. That area. But in the Middle Kingdom and during the 18th dynasty, definitely, they expanded the empire. And the 18th dynasty in earnest, and the reason they did it was, look, we don't want these people coming in here, conquering us again. It was embarrassing because they were the most powerful people in the ancient world. And here you had these Asians coming in, conquering them. 
for uh, you know for for uh, I don't know 100 years 150 about 100 years something like that. So to answer your question, it varied during whatever period. Uh, what it, during the various dynasties, the final period, the uh, Ethiopian period, the one that the white the white scientists give black people credit for, as if the rest of the people weren't black. Uh, the 25th dynasty, uh, they reconquered Kemet uh, because it had it had become decadent and was under Asian influence then also. So hopefully that uh, sheds some light on the subject. But those the vary the the boundaries vary is is my point. Mm. Well, since Africans had such a powerful uh, army, uh, two questions I want to ask you: uh, How did the Europeans manage to conquer Africa? Um, you know, uh, going up to the time of the uh, Greeks and Romans. Um, which has only been what a uh, couple thousand years ago, yes, yes, 2500. Yes. But up until that time, black men pretty much ruled the world up until the time of the Greeks and, and Romans. Uh, how were they able to uh, conquer ancient uh, Egypt and Africa? You know, um, that is a very important question that we need to raise with our African brothers and sisters and among our people here in America. Vulunlela Wabogo, Vulunlela Wabogo has a book called <clears throat> Old Wind from the North. And he shows how, you know, the, the great black civilizations of the Nile Valley, which extended into Mesopotamia and laid the groundwork for Sumer and Elam. And also, the great Indus Valley civilization of India. Uh, these great civilizations existed for, we don't know how long, I would say probably 10 or 12,000 years, uh, given the new evidence that's been excavated. Toward the, as, as time went on, after the great flood, and as uh, I would say uh, uh, around the second, first and second millennia, whites who had diverged from blacks, uh, you know, let me backtrack. The original people were African, it appears, and Africans migrated everywhere. The blacks who migrated into Europe, um, if you study Richard King and um, Sheikh Anna Diop, Francis Cress, Wealthy, and others, they apparently lost their pigment and ultimately mutated into either albinism or uh, simply, quote, turned white. I'm not a scientist, but they lost their pigment. The indigenous blacks of Europe lost their pigments and became pigment and became white. Over time, they ultimately came down into Egypt, Sumer, and the Nile Valley. And when they discovered those civilizations, the initial response of the, of the blacks was, to stone them, to drive them out, to block them from entering, and to otherwise discriminate against them and hold them off. Because they were basically um, uncivilized uh, nomads. And the, and the African people said, what is this? No, no, we can't have this. And so in Vulnilela Wabogo's book, he points out how you know, if you have a civilization just like this one here that's settled and people, you know, they have evolved into developing science and art and uh, a, a strong uh, educational system and so forth and so on. And you are approached by savages. In this case, in, in, um, in, in, the, in Africa and in, in uh, the Near East and so-called Near East, in Mesopotamia and in India, what happened was that the whites who were coming down on them over time developed weapons. It, it, it was a long, long, long time, but they, their only focus was how do we conquer these people and take over? And the, the blacks, especially in Kemet, 
fought, 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 fought. And and if you study, Chancellor Williams lays it out quite well. Some people may disagree with his point about how, uh, you know, how the mulatto th- uh, uh, class and so forth and so on. Some may disagree with that. But what happened was that the Africans being, first of all, they were in control. They, it was, they, these were their civilizations. So when gradually through wars, war after war after war, if we take Kemet, for example, uh, the blacks gradually moved southward further because we were not an integrating people. We had no, there was no reason to integrate with those, with those savages off, you know, coming off the sea or out of the desert or wherever they came from. And so um, in time, the whites developed a military um, capacity that ultimately overcame the blacks. And it took thousands, in Kemet it took thousands of years. In Mesopotamia, it took, it was a shorter period of time because you had a, a smaller area and it was more easily, uh, they were, it was more easily subdued. In India, it took longer too. And it's interesting, if you read, they left uh, the, the so-called Aryans in their Rig Veda tablets, told, they told you about the black civilization and they called them black and noseless and ugly. We're going to fight them. And they fought and fought and fought and fought and finally took over. And they established a caste system with the blacks at the bottom based on color. And to this day, it still exists. And by the same token, this kind of thing took place in Africa and in Mesopotamia. And and what again to 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 emphasize, if your only if your only project in life and in your civilization is war, in time, if this was what you have developed to the highest level, and you're confronting civilizations that are occupied with science and art and religion and education and building and all that, though they have a military component that is not all that they do and so it's the way i understand it and i find it quite plausible is after thousands of years the the people coming the the whites coming off the 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 steps in europe and and uh uh in northern europe mainly coming down on the civilizations of india of africa and of mesopotamia and in africa chancellor williams lays it all out very well the blacks ultimately settled in Nubia, in Egypt, and that is when they reconquered, when at its height, uh, Kush, re- uh, Nubia reconquered Egypt for a while. And then the Assyrians came in, and the blacks went further south and finally traveled westward and settled West Africa. And after a few, a, th- a, few, a thousand years or so there, Europeans came off the ocean with, with superior weapons. So it wasn't that we, that we, that our civil, the main thing was that we fought and fought for thousands of years, but ultimately the, the whites in, out of Europe and, and Western Asia conquered Africans because of their, uh, their military prowess, which was their preoccupation over thousands of years. That is my interpretation. It's taken largely from Chancellor Williams, but also from uh, Vulalele Wabogo's book, Cold cold um, wind from the north. And see, also, you can just glean that from studying. When you read about the, the Aryans who came in, on those black, the black people of India had a very, very advanced black civilization, which too was of African origin. And they had an advanced um, uh, um, drainage system and baths and a writing system. And just, they were advanced. And, and the, the, the Aryans came in and fought and fought and fought. And finally, they defeated them. And to this day, they established a caste system based on race. And the blacks are at the bottom. Not because we're infer- inherently inferior, just that, our, that we were defeated after thousands of years of civilization. So that's my response to that. I, I, of course, for people who want to know in details, Chancellor Williams, I think, is one of the best books to read because he talks about, he also talked about the nuances, how uh, in, we, we made uh, treaties with these white people, just like the Native Americans did. And of course, they didn't respect them. 
And then, of course, the worst thing of all was our uh, selling ourselves to them during the slave trade, you know, uh, in West Africa uh, after the Moorish domination of Spain for 800 years. Let's see, so. Well, I know you have an appointment, uh, four o'clock um, California time, <laughs> which would be seven o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. But we're going to do part two. You're going to come back with us for part two? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, right. as, I want to share as much as I can with our people so that we can regroup and regain our valor and, our, and, and uh, the right to our heritage. Okay. There's so many questions I have, but I, I know we have to let you go. You have another appointment. So um, I'm going to ask our people if they would um, hit the like button uh, and uh, join us so we can notify you who we got coming up next. Uh, and uh, it, it's been wonderful. I want to thank you, uh, Brother Attorney Legrand and uh, look forward to our next session. Uh, can we make it next week? Or? Uh, well, let's talk about it. I, I'm not okay. sure yet. I have to check my schedule. All right. So um, I, I want to let you go, and thank you again. You are welcome. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.